Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk all about my sixth grade curriculum picks for fall of 2020. This is part of my back to school series where I have been doing videos every day this week. I have shared videos with my favorite curriculums that we're planning to use for this fall, supply hauls. I even took you on a tour of our newly updated homeschool space. So if you haven't done so already, please subscribe, stick around so you don't miss any of that content. I will make sure to link the entire back to school playlist below in the description box. For those of you that are new around here, my name is Sarah and I have five kids. They are 13, 11, seven, two and a half, and a 10 month old baby. I have teenagers, toddlers, an infant, and elementary school kids. But today I want to talk to you all about my 11 year old Leah. She is entering into the sixth grade this fall and I want to share with you all of the curriculum that I have chosen to do with her this year. Leah is definitely an auditory learner. If she hears it once, she can pretty much memorize it. She loves audiobooks, music, lectures, anything auditory, she does really, really well with that. Now you will notice that a lot of the curriculums that I picked out for her match up very closely to what I picked for Noah, my seventh grader. And honestly, this is on purpose. Noah and Leah are less than 18 months apart in age. Any of you homeschool parents out there that have kids close in age like this, you know any subjects that you can teach together, it makes life so much easier. So I tend to try Try to pick curriculum where I can kind of meet in the middle between Noah in seventh grade and Leah in sixth grade and I try to choose things that will serve both of them well I want things that are challenging for both of them but I'm also looking for things that are going to take a little bit off of my plate as mama as teacher and make things for me a little bit easier Okay, so for math, this is not going to be a surprise for most of you. We are going to continue in Matthew C and do Matthew C zeta level decimals and percents. Leah has done Matthew C from the very beginning from preschool, kindergarten area. So she's just gonna keep chugging along in this curriculum. In order to do Zeta, you also have to have these Matthew C algebra and decimal inserts. And I actually was able to find these secondhand. Um, they are just, just these little inserts that go along and are additions to the math blocks that you already have. But these are a must if you're going to use this curriculum. I also have a couple of other manipulatives that I have on hand for her. She used these last year. These are just these little fraction um, kind of like pizza cutter s kind of things where you can take all of the fractions and build different circles or pies with them they're just like a nice hands-on visual to make fractions make sense um, so she'll continue to use those this year as well I also bought this it's just a manipulative for decimals that shows 1.0 and 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 and you can kind of just you know build these and see how the different decimals and breakdowns of a whole number work together. Um, I bought these from Rainbow Resource. I'll make sure to link any of the supplies or curriculum that I talk about today down below in the description box. Next for language arts, I'm going to start out with grammar and I'm going to show you this. This is First Language Lessons for the Well-Trained Mind by Jessie Wise. I don't even think they make this edition of the book anymore. It's probably really hard to find. I bought it, oh gosh, almost a decade ago, secondhand. This is the first and second grade curriculum put together into one book. And yes, that's not a mistake. I am using this first and second grade curriculum with my sixth grader. We tend to do grammar as a group subject, as a family subject all together. And so I really like to use this book as kind of a reference guide to just do basic grammar lessons as a family every day. Now, I will use the definitions and different activities in this book alongside of Fix It Grammar. And this is by IEW Institute and in Excellence in Writing. Um, we have this book, this is book number one. I also have book two, and we'll probably move into book three sometime in the middle of the year. But I like to just take sentences from this, put it up on a whiteboard, and we work them out as a family, marking all of the grammar, 
introducing how to diagram sentences, things like that. I really just enjoy doing grammar as a group subject. Now, I have just kind of learned with my kids by trial and error that the longer I waited to really teach grammar, the more they were able to pick up on it and take it on and comprehend it. So I would definitely recommend waiting to do grammar until the end of elementary school going into middle school. For our family, that has just been the best fit. And again, my kids have just comprehended it so much better that way. While we are on the topic of IEW, I will talk to you about Following Narnia Volume 1, The Lion's Song, again by Institute for Excellence in Writing. This is a curriculum that Noah, my seventh grader, actually requested to do. We have done IEW for our writing curriculum for several years now, and Noah read the Narnia series last year, and so he was really interested in doing this as our writing program this year. I love IEW. It is really the way I wish I would have learned how to write when I was a kid. So we will continue to use IEW again this year. And the kids are just really excited to be able to use this for writing and for their literature component of our homeschool. Lastly, for language arts, Leah will continue to go through spelling UC. And this is not a mistake. She finished D last year and she just really excelled and did very, very well in level D. And when we did her homeschool assessments, with Dr. Halinga this year, she really just encouraged me to go ahead and skip a level and move Leah up into F. So Leah is going to do Spelling UC uh, Level F Ancient Achievements, and this is really fun. It's gonna be all about world history. It has kind of some larger passages with some larger vocabulary words. This will definitely be a challenge for her, so we will move slowly through this this year, but she is just really excited to jump into this. Now, if you have been around my channel very long, you know that we are a gather round family. We use gather round homeschool as the core of our homeschool curriculum. If we get nothing else accomplished every single day, we always hit math and our gather round homeschool unit studies. I am really wanting Leah to focus in on gather round for her science, history, and geography. We are kind of heavy handed with our language arts curriculum, so I will probably let her skip some of the language arts worksheets in her notebook every day just because we're hitting it heavy with other curriculum. We are already working on the oceans unit. We've been working on that for the month of August and it has been so so fun learning about all of these different sea animals. Alongside of Oceans, I am also planning to do some other units this semester, this fall going into Christmas. I am also planning on doing Africa, artists, and then by that time it'll be Thanksgiving area, so I'm hoping we will do the Christmas mini unit. Now, speaking of mini units, another unit study that we're gonna do alongside of those core units is the Gather Round Homeschool United States mini unit of government. And I chose this for our history and geography focus because the election is coming up here in the States in November. And so this was just very timely. This is going to be a really fun unit to do. And I'm going to do this alongside of our other core units. If you're not familiar with the mini units, they are smaller than the regular core gather round units. They only have two student worksheets per lesson versus the five that come in the normal units. So these are definitely mini. They also cost a little bit less. They're about $15 less per digital unit. So we will do this probably twice a week in the afternoons um, just you know to supplement our other curriculum. Moving into extras and electives, the first thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is the Bible study Leah will be doing. We don't necessarily consider Bible to be part of our homeschool. It's really more a part of our family culture. My kids do a Bible study every single day, whether we're homeschooling that day or not. But I still wanted to share with you what we had picked out for the kids to use this year. Noah and Leah both are going to be doing this Meeting with Jesus, a daily Bible reading plan for kids by David Murray. They can completed the Exploring the Bible book that was the first one in this series last year and really, really enjoyed it. This type of Bible study is great if you have older kids that you're trying to encourage to start reading the Bible on their own, to dig into scripture independently. So every day Noah and Leah get up and they grab this Bible study and they go to their corners and do this all on their own. And then we talk about what they learned at breakfast time. This Bible study gives your child a passage to read in scripture 
scripture every day, just a couple of verses, not anything too heavy handed. It also gives Bible verses for them to work on memorizing, prayer points, and even gives them a page that they can use on Sundays to take notes at church for the sermon time. Another extra that we're going to continue to work on little by little is Song School Spanish, and we're moving into book two. We have been doing Song School Spanish for several years now. It's from Classical Academic Press, and, and we just love it. It comes with a DVD, a CD, these workbooks. You can print coloring pages for preschoolers and toddlers. It is a really great introduction to the Spanish language. It is conversational in style. We're moving very, very slowly through this curriculum. I'm really just trying to get my kids feet wet in the Spanish language, really just slowly introduce them to the idea of learning a foreign language. That way when they get to high school and they need to jump in and study a foreign language fully, they, they just have already been a little bit familiar with it. Another extra or part of our homeschool are our nature study journals. Nature journals are just something that we do in our family year in and year out, little by little. I try to hit nature journals at least once a week. Sometimes we maybe hit it every other week, but but Leah will continue to work in her nature journal. I'm actually planning to do an entire series about nature journals this fall. Another elective that Leah has requested to do this year is kind of my own home mech of sorts. Leah really enjoys cooking and is very curious about learning how to cook on her own. And so she is going to start helping me with all of the grocery shopping, grocery lists, meal planning, and she has even decided to take on making most of our breakfasts and lunches and some desserts on her own. She wants to be able to pick up a cookbook and be able to cook on her own with very little assistance from me. So that's something we're working on is just kind of my own life skills, home ec kind of style thing that I'm just gonna work on her little by little, meal by meal, grocery shopping trip by grocery shopping trip. The last extra or elective I'm gonna show you is a planner. I bought this planner at Michael's for Leah. It is an 18 month planner. It starts in July of 2020 and goes all the way to the end of 2021. So this is a really nice hefty planner and she has already started to use this to start planning meals and to keep track of things. Like I said in my video with Noah and his planner, I'm really working it this year, encouraging my middle schoolers to be a little bit more independent to take ownership of their own schedules, tasks, calendars. I'm just really trying to help them along and start paving the way for high school little by little. Okay guys, well I think that's it. That covers all of my curriculum that I've picked out for Leah for this fall 2020 for sixth grade. If you enjoy this kind of content, please like this video, give it a thumbs up below, and leave me a comment. If you're a middle school parent in particular, tell me what middle school curriculum you have picked out to use with your child this year. I'm, I'm always excited and interested to see what other people are using. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Like I said, this video is part of my back to school series. I'm posting new videos every single day this week with back to school content, and you're not going to want to miss any of that. I hope that your homeschool is off to a great start this fall. See you later.